Henry David Thoreau said that if the alternative is to keep all just men in prison or give up war and slavery, the state will not hesitate which to choose. He said this because even he went to jail for choosing not to pay taxes, and this was a courageous action done by many individuals in the 1800s. How many people would be willing to do that today? But they did that under the basis of morality, of their own conscience, and there is such a thing as a conscience, and thinking for yourself, and doing what is right, regardless of what someone tells you, regardless of a religion, regardless of a science, it's beyond all those things because you're following something much deeper. You know, it's not just an instinct, it's a conscience. And that's why you have concepts such as natural law and natural rights. So we're going to get into the foundation of what those terms mean. Let's get into it. In trying to assess the reality we live in, one should either accept the idea that when creation came into existence, that law, both physical law, physics, and spiritual law came with it, or that only creation came into existence without law. Mainstream science itself has to admit that physical laws govern everything. How science loves physics, teaching it all the way into the highest universities, yet refusing to acknowledge any spiritual laws whatsoever, their thought pattern goes like this. If one cannot see it, measure it, or weigh it, then it cannot exist. The fourth hermetic principle is polarity. This is considered a spiritual law. It says that everything has its opposites. Day and night, left and right, up and down, the cardinal points in a compass, etc. Then for there to be a physical, there then must be a spiritual, the seen and the unseen. By refusing to accept this spiritual aspect of creation, mainstream science becomes unbalanced. The book of James says, quote, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And Nikola Tesla said, quote, the day that science seriously looks into the unseen world as well as the seen world, then we would learn more in a year than everything we have learned previously. End quote. So those are very powerful statements saying, hey, there's more to this reality than what meets the eye. It's the unseen. And I talk about Taoism, which is an ancient Chinese philosophy. You see the yin yang symbol and that dark part of the symbol stands for the yin, the darkness, what is unseen. And it's really emphasized within the text that that is what conceives of everything because without dark, you don't have light, but yet everybody wants to look at the light. And so when we're talking about spiritual laws, physical laws, for laws to exist, it must be easily perceived, common to all and obliging to all equally. One cannot expect to jump out of an airplane without the parachute and expect not to become seriously injured or killed. Why? Because a natural law was violated. As well, if one chooses to live on potato chips, hot dogs, and beer, one should not be surprised if their health has been affected. It may take some time, but it will happen for the same reason. A law was violated. The results can happen very suddenly, or it may take a while depending on what law was not adhered to. Spiritual laws operate on the same principle. Objective moral law, similarly said and noted by individuals like Mark Passio or C.S. Lewis, Lysander Spooner, Elihu Palmer, and so on and so forth, is easily perceived, and common to all and obliging to all, con natural, which means connected by nature. It is inborn. In other words, our conscience. If we ignore our conscience, then the only thing that can keep us in check is the fear of getting caught. And there is no morality in that. Acknowledging natural law is not dependent on it working or not. <laughs> no belief is required in law. It does what it does because that is what it is designed to do. Perhaps there was a watchmaker god who designed this clock wound it up and left to do other things. People are not zapped by a lightning bolt when they do something wrong because natural law, also known as karma, will deliver the behavioral consequences for actions, good or bad. Karmic law additionally cannot make exceptions for neglectful grieving parents who lost a child falling off a cliff or for the child itself, because if it did, then it wouldn't be a law. 
Sometimes what we call miracles do occur that we cannot fully explain. But as the Hermetic principles teach us, quote, what is perceived as random chance is really a law unrecognized as yet, end quote. Spiritual laws, just like the physical laws, can be discovered and understood. It is indeed our responsibility to discover and understand them. Everything, not just physics, is governed by law. There are laws that govern good health, music, mathematics, freedom. Nothing is ungovernable, and we learn through time. Karmic law is nothing to fear. Do good and one will receive good. Practice bad behavior and the results of that behavior will be manifest. Real law must be unchanging, consistent, and absolute, or it wouldn't be law. Ask yourself this, why is it that most cultures teach the golden rule or share a similar morality? So this article was written by Victor Johnson. Thank you very much, Victor Johnson. You know, it's very, very thought-provoking. And that is the key. You see, among all the different ancients and all the different religions and all the different sciences, you see some patterns that arise. We're trying to figure out the nature of the universe. We're trying to find out what binds to us all. We're trying to find out the effects to our actions. We're trying to find out what we should do. And does that not all lead in the direction of morality and ethics and principles? Because that's how we attain this thing we call order. And is not the direction of law and government and science and religion to create order within our lives and within the universe and with everybody around us? I'm pretty sure that is the goal. At least most people, if I ask them, they say, why do you follow religion? Why do you want other people to follow religion? Or why do you follow science? And why do you want other people to follow science? Or why do you follow this certain system? And why do you want other people to follow that certain system? I'm pretty sure I'm going to get an answer somewhat related to what I said. But here's the deal. I'm going to put some questions on the screen for you. What if we say we want a good world, a world based on order, a world based on those ideals I mentioned, but actually we are contradicting ourselves and we don't because what we actually put out into the world and manifest is karma that is not good. It's bad karma. It's not in alignment with our goals. It's actually ignorance that is beating us on the head. It's not that we don't have a good intent. It's not that we don't see what needs to be done. It's that we aren't actually following through. Or it's that we're allowing some bad things in the midst of all the good things we're doing, and therefore those good things are not really showing up at the end. This is what we really need to take into consideration, because if we say that, well, maybe all those good things are not actually good things, then we were wrong. And we have to admit that we were wrong. And then we have to admit that we were ignorant. And then we have to admit that, that we don't really know what the natural law is and that we don't know what morality is, and then we have to find out what it really is. And so there's this learning process, and we do this every day in our lives, and we're doing this now in a collective where we're raising our consciousness to see the bigger picture, the holistic mind, the holistic picture of what's going to happen when certain actions take place. And I will tell you this, when people partake in politics, in the ritual of voting, they do not see what that's actually doing. When people want to change the politician or change the laws, they're not seeing what it's actually doing and the effects that are being brought into the world. But by asking these questions, you get to see that effect. But most people are not going to ask you those questions, and therefore, you're going to allow evil despite wanting to do good. You may believe that good will come to you because you are doing good, but instead you're getting evil because you don't see the evil amongst the good. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you can understand this concept. Always do good, never do wrong. And if you want, send us an article, I'll turn to a video for you. Go to theliberator.us. That's theliberator.us. Thank you very much for watching.